Good evening. Uh, welcome to the uh, seven o'clock meeting of the Northampton Planning Board for Thursday, September 22nd. Uh, first item on the agenda each meeting is to ask if anyone has public comment that's not on the agenda. Great. It's a rare taker on that. <laughs> yeah, come up. Since the Board of Public Works got abolished, I have to come somewhere else now. Okay. <laughs> My name is uh, Richard Gazowski. I live on Nonatuck Street in Florence. I was unable to come to your last meeting, but it was my inspiration for coming to this one. And I'd like to make a few comments about sustainability and infill and the conduct of that last meeting. Okay. Uh, as far as sustainability goes, I guess we're doing sustainability to save the planet. And in order to be interested in saving the planet, you have to have some exposure to the planet. Now, I taught ecology in Springfield for 20-something years, and I saw how difficult it was to get kids interested in the environment when they didn't have any exposure to it in their neighborhoods. And when I was looking through the, uh, what was it, the rezoning North Hampton for sustainable uh, future literature today, all of the pictures that were shown there had absolutely no green in them. They were tenements, or they were houses packed together so close there was no green at all. So if we're out to save the planet, these people living in these sustainable dwellings may not have much appreciation for the planet because they don't see it. All right, so that's one of my uh, concerns. The other one was a little bit about the uh, Hinckley Street property. Speaking of green, I found a colored pencil the other day and colored in the uh, plot plan for that. Everything in red is pavement or roof and everything in white inside that block is a little bit of green. I like to think I'm sustainable because I grow my own food. I have a garden that's 600 square feet. That's two-thirds the size of one of these dwelling units. Where is anybody going to grow something here? I have a duplex house in Hadley, sustainable, two floors, one building. All right, I have a new tenement, or a new tenant, rather. All right, we take care of all the lawn care. This woman is dying to do something. She wants to plant, she wants to trim, she wants to cut, she wants to participate in the environment, and we're letting her. But if you're living in one of these high-density, community-owned green spaces, where are you gonna do that? And if you go beyond this step to downtown, it's a long walk to the community gardens. Okay, so that was... Uh, first thing. Okay, if we have infill, we're, I'm assuming we're making more room in the same amount of space for more people. So if we, if we do that, if we cram more people into the same area, what's that do to the population of the city? And what does that do to the sustainability factor? All right, if we have twice as many people coming in, all of a sudden we're a city of 60,000 instead of a city of 30,000. What does that do to sustainability? Uh, all right, that's part of it. The other one is uh, the conduct of the meeting last time. I wasn't here. I tried to participate. All right, I did watch it on television the other day. And I got the feeling from just body language here that last, me last week's meeting on Hinckley Street was a done deal. People were restricted in how long they could speak. I spent a couple of hours preparing a one-page statement that would have taken one minute to read. I gave it to Sarah here to read for me, but she was not allowed to do that. When it finally was presented, my name was not presented, and it had been editorialized as a boom, 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 boom thing, get it out of the way. Okay, members of this committee did not close the public hearing. I've never been to a meeting like that. All right, there is a public hearing. You close the public hearing. Then you go out and deliberate. You did your deliberation in the middle of the public hearing, which means you could have been interrupted. You could have gotten information that busted somebody's train of thought. And uh, members of the committee often answered questions for the developer, like what's going to happen to the snow? Well, let's bucket it out. Let the, let the new tenants worry about it. Bucketing out snow as I used to say to my students, is there's no such thing as going away. It's like catching a rabbit in your have a heart trap and taking it down the street and dumping it. 
Where are you going to take your snow? What are you going to do with it? Whose water problem is that going to be, become? Is that something that's considered? Okay, with all the plans that get presented to this board, I'm sure they're all fair weather plans, like this one was. Where is the snow going to go? Where is the ice going to go? What's the hill factor? How do we deal with snow if we don't want to plow it? Okay, the easiest way is to look at what Home Depot does and what Staples does and what Big Y does in the wintertime. The ground is white with salt. Okay, if you don't want to bucket the snow out of one of these places, what are you going to do with it? You're going to melt it. And then nothing goes away. Where's the salt going to go? Salt's going to go down into that ravine or wherever things are going to happen. And then what? Okay, so I just want you to realize that not everybody in the world is in for infill. A lot of people, when they heard the word infill, said, well, there's a spare lot. They're going to pop another house there. There's an expanded yard. Maybe they'll put a mother-in-law apartment there. Nobody planned on having mini condominiums popping up all over the place. And how soon will it be before we get a four-story high-rise starting in some of these neighborhoods? So that's my two cents. Maybe I'll be back for another time, okay? I appreciate you taking the time to come. And I, I did think I covered your letter. It was my intention to do so. And I apologize if it seemed like people were short. But this volunteer board was here until after midnight that night. So I, I realize the importance of the project to you. But I, I actually thought I let everyone say their piece and some more than once. Yes. Hello, Sarah Northrop, 147 Hinkley Street. Um, I didn't realize my plowman was going to be here. Um, also speaking to um, the 121 Hinkley Street project and that, uh, and that decision, um, personally as an abutter I was disappointed that there weren't tougher conditions imposed, uh, specifically things that, um, that uh, neighbors who would be directly impacted asked for, so I'm just expressing that general disappointment. As a member of another volunteer board, um, I would, um, I'm, it, has, it has brought to my attention the importance of being really clear about conditions when we're about to vote on a project and we have, uh, we have a motion in front of us. Sometimes we make a motion and we kind of frame the conditions as we go. You got it, Carolyn? Great. And we trust Carolyn because she's awesome. And she sorts out what needs to be written out and what is really in the zoning regs anyway. Um, the issue is that when there's a challenge, as we came close to appealing the decision, I, I don't think anyone's actually going to bring it uh, forward to court that I know of, but. Um, it, it leaves the board open to, it leaves the decision, any vagueness makes not only the decision more vulnerable, but it may gets more expensive for the city to have to have legal counsel defend it, things like that. So um, on the topic of infill, I also was uh, looking over the discussions and the public input about developing those changes to the regulations, to the zoning. Um, and my understanding was the principle and the ideal of it had a lot to do with taking a location where you would, it's kind of like the principle of lot size averaging, except now you're kind of density averaging. Um, and pulling some of your increased density into your areas of increased density rather than pushing them out into, you know, mineral hills and such areas. Um, and here's a case where you have, um, in our neighborhood, the 121 Hinkley Street application, the neighboring properties, you have a density of maybe two people per acre. It's really, we've got big open space lots and, and that's nice, of course. And when one does a cluster development in the Historically, maybe before the infill uh, changes were figured out, you'd have a big chunk of land and you'd kind of cluster everybody together so you'd preserve some open space. And that makes the, makes the area more attractive, uh, nicer place to live. Um, and here's a case where 
it's the abutting properties that are providing the pleasant open space um, uh, to their own detriment. Um, so I continue to be a bit disappointed in that, and I'm interested in looking at the uh, at the infill regs and, and maybe it's time you know we do these things we make some changes and maybe there's another iteration to see what exactly are the effects of this and I know that when the discussion happened uh, I know there was some analysis um, uh, using GIS etc after the fact but when we were first going through the process it really wasn't clear what's going to be the consequence of this and it was kind of well let's try it and see what happens well, here's one thing that happened that um, uh, uh, really upset a lot of people pretty, pretty much unanimously around the neighborhood. Um, and, um, and that's my piece. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Does anyone else have open comment on something not on the agenda? OK. Um, I'd like to open the 7 o'clock. Uh, Central Business Architecture <coughs> Committee review and special permit minor addition less than 30 foot tall, <coughs> greater than five foot setback Christian Science Society, 76 Center Street, Northampton, map ID 31D-126. Uh, oh, maybe I didn't get there. Sorry, it is 46. 46, oh, 46. Oh. thank you. Uh, there's one place, let's see. Yes, sir. Introduce yourself. Uh, good evening. My name is Jonathan Archibald, and uh, I'm here to talk about this small project. Uh, this project here consists of a uh, addition to the uh, church at the uh, aforementioned address. Uh, the addition consists of a uh, bathroom and a uh, egress stair out of the uh, back of the church. Uh, total square footage is about a 120 square feet. Uh, the uh, elevations will be kept, uh, the, the new materials will be used uh, to mimic the existing, and um, that I'm not sure what to say about this project. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe we'll ask Carolyn to say some things about this project. Yeah, just to be clear, so this um, <coughs> permit, um, because it's in the Central Business District, also required a review from the Central Business Architecture Committee. They met earlier tonight. They issued a permit. But the reason they look at it for the details of the exterior facade design, in this case, it comes to the Planning Board because it's um, an addition that's not 30 feet tall and not right at the property line. Mm -hmm. So there's a provision in the code that says that um, with a special permit, the board can grant um, um, these site types of permits that are um, smaller, shorter than 30 feet, and further back from the property line. So that's why it's here. Um, you know, it doesn't say what the scale of the project is that would trigger that, but this happens, you know, uniquely to be very small addition. Is, how does this project relate to the one we did back in the summer? Yeah. From the building that you sold or they sold? Right. Is, I mean, is this the consequence of that, or is that? Yeah, sort of. You know, they had to take off. It's the, the two buildings used to be connected, and they've chopped that off and completely separated the two structures. And though this is sort of creating the end cap or whatever have you to, the, um, to that one building. And the other one is under currently right. under renovation. Does this, does this need to be ADA accessible? Because we did the ramp for the building two doors down, but this building. I thought that this addition was going to include a ramp or something, but it doesn't have. That's tr there's there are different thresholds triggered under oh. the building code. So oh. whatever's you know. So they haven't. Triggered I don't think this is triggered. That. No, no. Okay. Good question. That's too bad. <laughs> yeah, It'd be a nice time to do it. Yeah. Short is handicap accessible. Are there any other questions yeah, for the applicant or for? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I noticed. Right, right. The bathroom itself is accessible, but the building right. isn't. I mean, I think the. The, the reason for the applicant to be here is a good one um, because downtown we want in general uh, the buildings to be a certain height and up on the street but this is such a minor addition it's keep in keeping with the building I, I don't have any issue with it at all anybody else have any thoughts about it it's also hidden by the Right, so, right. I mean, yeah, right. it's not it's like 60 Masonic where you can actually see right. it. This is pretty hidden from. So, can I have a move to close the public hearing? Uh, we're 
of open it to questions if anyone's here. Thank you. Anyone have uh, comments about this? Not here for this project? Okay. Motion to close public hearing. Second. Mark, seconded by John, who beat out Ann. All in favor? Okay. Um, seems rather straightforward. I'll take one last shot at discussion or thoughts. Are there any conditions that you want on this, or is this something we could even condition any thoughts? No, it's a special permit, but I, I don't know of any conditions that I would want to put on it. Okay, can I hear a motion? Motion to approve special permit for a minor addition less than 30 feet tall, greater than five foot setback at Christian Science Center, 46 Center Street, Northampton. Motion by Tess, seconded by Ann. All in favor? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, second item on the agenda was put on there by Carolyn as a text change to uh, right. so I can so um, I can explain that like so um, as I mentioned the staff memo and and um, I think it's clear from the proposed text changes that there were four districts where we had um, originally in 2011, the city council approved um, the provision for the allowance of a large scale um, photovoltaic systems on property um, with special permitting. And um, at that time, it was done across the board for the, for the entire city. And for uh, whatever reason, for the RRSR, URA and URB districts, it didn't get codified, it didn't get put up on the web <laughs> site. So then subsequently, uh, the, um, the fact that they were missing when I went through and pulled all this information from all those um, districts to then modify the zones, um, the zoning changes that you all recently passed for SR and RR and A and B, um, the uh, missing information was just sort of perpetuated. So this is just to clean up, to go back to 2011. Since council voted on the changes for those four districts without the language, then it effectively, you know, made it go um, codified without the language. So this puts it back in, and that's um, simply what it is. There are no modifications to the t to the text. It's the way it was adopted, and I mean, you may want to seek modifications to it, but. The um, goal was just to get it back in there. And again, this is for, this is not, these are not accessory panels. So it's not about a single family, because we have other provisions for <coughs> residential um, properties that want to have their own PV and they might have some, a little bit of excess. That's one category. This is just completely sort of, not industrial scale, but you know, mm -hmm. energy production scale. Right. Like the um, landfill project? Like the right. landfill, so exactly. The Right. So this is something that we've actually voted on the text of previously in 2011. Right. And we do get a chance to rethink it if anyone wants to. Right. Um, I think the only thing I got was just a sort of a surprise at how many board feet of lumber were, were you know, you could take down to put up solar array. But I think it was partly that I didn't even know how to scale how many board feet were how many trees worth so yeah so I don't know if it, I mean I don't know a whole lot about this stuff but when Devin raised the issue I had to sort of rethink what that really means and I don't I can't recall where that number came from it wasn't pulled out of thin air it was sort of a balance I guess but you know they have calculators online and all that so I sort of figured if you're taking a 30 or 40 foot tree um, it might be, I think, what did I say, 20, uh, 20 of 20 those? Trees. 20 to 25 of that size tree mm -hmm. would be approximately. And of course, it depends on the mm -hmm. you know, species and that kind of thing. And the landfill project that we already approved would still meet these requirements, right? I mean, there wasn't anything. Right, and that was in a different district, so that was our, that was our, right. that was no oh, okay. problem. Okay. So that was allowed, but there, oh, I thought that was RR. Yeah. I didn't know. Um, oh, no, it's water supply protection. That's right. So it right. was in that, and um, they aren't taking any trees for that right. because it's on the landfill. So um, uh, the, people aren't 
going where there's an excess of trees and I'm cutting them down to put the right. solar project here. Right. They're, they're going someplace where there aren't a lot of trees. Right. This is a permission to take those that are there down. So right. I think there's a, it's, it's a natural overhead cost to, to uh, clear the trees. Yeah, so right. You can't make money off trees, but still, right. there's. I agree with you, that's all, not the begging place to go. And all three of these are the identical. It's the same. We've same same lines for all yeah. three. Yes. Has the city had any, in, since 2011, any um, installations that required this? No, it's only been the landfills, the first one, and that was just you mm -hmm. know a few months ago. Yeah. There was conversation about putting it at the airport, but I don't think that ever happened, did it? Um, they do have a system, um, but there, then that was another category carved out, was if you're covering um, landfills or at the airport, because that was already wide open, and, and so it was sort of determined as we were developing the ordinance that those would be Good places. Incentivize so those, yeah. those were created as an those spots were created sure. to be yeah as an incentive as opposed to this, and and if the reason why there's the cutting limit is that, you know there are large swaths on the western part of the city that are forested and if people are looking for, you know if they're not otherwise developable, but it might be a good place for a um, solar farm, um, we also didn't want to see. Right. you know a whole hillside cleared of trees just for the purposes of doing this so that's mm -hmm. why the limit is in there there was one a few years back on I don't know if it was Chesterfield Road it was a farmhouse that on the oh, yeah. back side of it there was room and it was a pretty good size mm -hmm. array but I don't I don't remember the need to knock down a bunch of trees no it was already I if it wasn't that was the Melnick mm -hmm property and that was also accessory but up to so that was supporting the residential use right plus. yes yeah yeah okay yeah I'm, I'm good with this since we already approved okay can I have a motion motion to approve text change in URA URB SR and RR reinstating PV language that was adopted in 2011 second, second. and again all in favor um, I'd like to open a continue. No, it's a continuation of the request by Michael's. Seven twenty-two. Yeah, sure. Wait, slow down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We have to wait till seven thirty because we expected to take longer to get here. So it's published for seven thirty. So uh, we have several other uh, business keeping items. We'll do some of those in the meantime, and we'll be on at seven thirty. Um, do you want to explain the A and R for West Hampton Road? Yes, and I actually have two A and Rs. One that came in today. <clears throat> the first one is West Hampton Road. It's really just a land swap. Um, there were several swag lots that were approved um, on West Hampton Road, and they're not shown on this plan. They're over here, and there was this leftover lot that was. Um, Basically, it's very wet down here, and um, it, it's labeled as lot four because the other three lots were already permitted by special permit to the west. So, and there's a common driveway built here. This portion is going to a separate owner, so they want to carve out um, a portion of that that has the common driveway on it and deed it over to the other parcel um, to which this common driveway has um, leads. Um, so it's not creating a new building lot, it's just um, taking almost two acres and um, attaching it to the other parcels. I'm, I'm confused. Why is that, logistically speaking, why is that needed for the other? Well, so what happened is this was all, uh, and, um, you can find it, this in really no. tiny area, there's just like these three flag lots up here, and I can pass this around if you want. Um, I had other copies, but I left them up at the office. So um, essentially, this all came in. It was one giant piece, but you can only have three lots served off of a common driveway. So this is where the perks were, and this is where there, were, there was no wetland um, resource. So this lot four essentially became leftover land, and, and unless there's access from another means, this parcel can't be developed. Mm -hmm. Um, but I believe the intention is to go ahead and sell these lots off individually to other parties and then the 
the developer will retain this other lot. So to make it cleaner, I think they just want to make sure the common driveway sits on all the other okay. three lots that are going to be set aside for the single family homes. Okay. And there, mm -hmm. that it doesn't. Um, that means the fourth lot can't be built on? Can't be built on unless there's another means of access that's provided and that also would come through the planning board beforehand. So have any of the other three been developed? No. Only the common driveway is there. So would they come back to us with a different plan for how to put three houses on those on those? No, acres? that's already been approved. Right. The lots are recorded, okay. so they don't need to come back for that. And where is that physically on, on West Hampton Road? Um, it's just past the intersection of West Farms and Glendale by maybe a quarter of a mile. On the right? Like on heading? the north side, yep. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I know where it is. Any thoughts on any reasons why this doesn't feel good? Um, hear a motion to give Carolyn uh, a go ahead or do you do it? Power. Yeah. <laughs> Endorsement power. So moved. So. <laughs> um, by John and Ann uh, to give the planning office a go ahead with uh, the ANR on West Hampton Road. Next one. Yep, so then the other A&R actually is one that you all signed about, well, the board. I'm sorry. John informs me that we didn't complete that. Can I see a show of hands on the motion? <laughs> Thank really you. Fast. Okay. If you have money on tonight's paying. <laughs> 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 it's just what it is. So this one came before you in... Um, before the board in 2005 and it was endorsed and there um, it's on Baker Hill Road there are four lots and it was signed but the owner never recorded it and they couldn't find the mylar and it's not at the registry so they need to have another signature <laughs> so um, these are 25 26,000 square foot lots they have 70 over 75 feet of frontage um, nothing is changing about what was already signed back in 2004. So, so where, where Baker, Baker Hill, Hill Road. Road. So um, off of Nottatuck, it's up that hill. So okay. how this one larger lot that's turned different from the others, uh -huh. does it have frontage? No. It's um, back, it uh, goes with a lot that has frontage on Nottatuck Street. Okay. So, um, you mean if it were to be developed, it would have to do a common driveway through the lot that's next to it? Um, yes. So we're being asked to approve something that's approval not required for something we've already approved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you make a motion for that? <laughs> that sounds bureaucratic or what? <laughs> motion to endorse. Second. Second. Thank you. And I think we should vote on this one. All in favor? <laughs> You can see the clock, Mark, is it ready? 7.30, go ahead. Okay, thank you. I'd like to open uh, a conti uh, the continuation of a request by Michael's House for 18 parking, uh, 18 lot parking lot. Hi there. Apparently we have a memory stick tonight, so we just stick it in here. Yeah, there's a slot here. There's also one on the back of that. Perfect, and then you can just pull it up. It should the screens are really good. So. All right. All right. Good evening. Um, my name is John Furman. I'm the managing director <coughs> for VHB in Springfield, and with me tonight is Andrew Crystal from Account Development, and we're here as a continuation of the application for Michael's house for addition of. Um, 12 parking spaces. So uh, if you recall at the last meeting, we were asked to go back and evaluate the design uh, and see if we could eliminate uh, or reduce uh, the parking. <clears throat> so we have, as we had submitted these to uh, Carolyn uh, earlier in the, in the week, uh, and then had an update today. Um, I guess I can't drop and drag. So what we have done is uh, we have, as we had talked about at the last meeting, 
um, we have um, revised the parking. So this row used to have nine spaces here. Uh, it, it now has 12. And what we've done is the sidewalk used to come out to the end. Uh, we have made all this park, uh, all this paving instead of concrete, and we've moved the ADA ramp to the end of the sidewalk here. Um, this had a small piece of uh, grass which was left, so we basically extended the, the parking to the end, added three more spaces, and what is different here is that this is currently all paved now anyway, um, and what we've done is the paving is actually deteriorated because of the dumpsters here, so we extended, since we're coming to this point now, we extended the saw cut across and we're good, basically gonna be replacing all the pavement in this area as well. The original application stopped right about here. So what we have done, um, oh, I, can't, I guess I can move it, awesome. Uh, so uh, what we have done is um, we have made these spots here, I'll zoom up on it so you can see the, um, well, all right, I'm gonna go back to the old one. Uh, we've made these spaces, um, spaces for the future. So we basically taken the curb that was here uh, and used to wrap around this limit here. We just extended it straight. We have these identified as future. And then what we have done is we've added a row, uh, a hedge row along the front of these, which you can see here. Um, it, we had just identified it generically and Carolyn asked that we identify a species in there. So uh, I'm not gonna do the name justice, the Latin name, it's Taxus cuspidata, which is basically a U. Um, it stands up about, uh, um, we're gonna have it maintained, so it's about uh, three foot tall, and they're planted on three foot on centers. It's a very hardy plant. Um, it grows very dense, and it'll make a nice, a nice uh, hedge. Um, so that is basically the, the parking uh, issue. Uh, we had other um, items to address, um, in which we took this opportunity to update the plan. If you call from the DPW, they were looking for us to create a dam, if you would, so that water which may come in from uh, State Street would not enter the property and, and go down the driveway. So I have it shown on two plans here, but it, this is the easiest one to see. So um, the easiest way to think of this dam is really as a speed table. Um, so we're basically taking a driveway. If this were a driveway here, this is a perfect example. The driveway comes right in through here. These two sides would be the curb. So what we do is we take the asphalt here, we slope it up to the top of the, the desks and then back down on the other side. And there's a flat area at the top. So any water that comes in here basically gets, gets dammed around. Um, and it'll gain six inches over what's there already as far as uh, ponding water. So, so we've taken care of that. Um, I don't know, on the, uh, one of the other comments that uh, we were asked to address was uh, lighting. So uh, we went out there I think it was uh, Tuesday night, and uh, we walked around, kind of created a grid. So um, this is the uh, foot candles from a handheld light meter. Um, so as you can see, that the, there's a uh, <coughs> street light, which is located right about here. Um, it, it doesn't seem to be functioning very well. It <coughs> flickers, and it's very dark in this area. But these are the foot candles that are existing along the property line. And then as you go across, the property, we basically can measure them across here. And then this is where the existing light is that uh, uh, is on an existing utility pole. And then you can see as it goes through across the property, it starts to, to drop down. So I think that's all we were looking for, Carolyn, was just kind of looking and seeing what the light levels were in the. Yeah, could you describe what that vo that level, the illumination level is for the one light under the light? Yeah, it's 22.1 foot candles. And it's it, uh, the light is a square light. Um, Andrew believes it is uh, owned by Wemco and that they are leasing it, it's their light. So it is not a box light that shines down, it is a light that's on an angle. So most of the intensity is out over here uh, in the center of the, of the parking area. Um, but again, standing right underneath the light pole, um, you know, that's the reading that we, that we took. Does it need to be zero at the lot line? It does. Um, the other 
question might be uh, that you all might have is, um, you know, whether there's are there any other light? Is there are there any other lights on the building? So at that entrance at the door, is there a light? There, um, there is. There? Yep. Um, so there are two lights right back here, which are on the adjacent property, uh -huh. and they actually light up all the area behind uh, the dumpster. So that means that we're getting spill off from them. And this, uh, it's, I know it's tough to see, but this is the major building wall here. Um, this is the limit of the survey, and it curls around and comes like this. Um, this is an entrance here, and that square represents a light that's there. So this area here is lit up um, as well. But nothing over the, isn't that an there's, entrance? There, the yes, there is an entrance over here, but there's no light. There's lighting inside the vestibule. The, um, it's hard to describe. The vestibule is actually wider on the inside and the exterior wall comes around, it's like a big arch. So the light is behind the wall over there so it lights up the vestibule but it doesn't project at all. When, when people park, is that the entrance they'll be coming in or do they uh, go? I would have to refer to Andrew. We, we like staff to park back there so they, they may enter through the back, the main entrance of the <coughs> residence is on the other side. Just to make sure I understand. So originally, I, uh, it has on the, the agenda that you're looking for an 18 space lot, yeah. which I think is what you had last time, nine and nine. And now you've got 12 and nine, which is 21. Yes. So you're asking for more spaces. With the understanding that we're not building the ones, the nine that are there unless we need them. And I believe in the email that we wrote to Carolyn, we would commit not to building those only building the 12. And if at some point in the future, it was determined that we did need those nine, we would notify the planning board that we were building them. But in advance of doing it. Back. Well, it all depends on what you That's think right. is appropriate. So yeah. you could structure a decision that allowed that with just notification um, saying, okay, we're embarking on this and we'll plant the use and the other things. Or um, you could, um, require them to come back um, and just approve the 12 um, but you you know I guess you'd want to base that on um, you know what the difference would be in your approval so um, three extra spaces from the original um, submittal is that enough to say it's too much I mean they're still meeting the open space requirements and they um, they're showing a means to address some of the concerns about sort of headlights and then that impact of s that visual impact of seeing the parked cars on that side of the property so um, I think that all of that should be you know weighed by the board mm -hmm. are yeah. you suggesting that the U's aren't going in until the second row of parking is I think that's no. what they're proposing yes. that's right Oh, I lost that. So those yeah. that row isn't <laughs> yeah. going in now. No, there's no okay. need to have it now because okay. there's no headlights mm -hmm. facing that way. Hmm. Um, if I could elaborate on one thing too on the stormwater system. So um, we had oversized the stormwater system previous to um, this change. We had extra capacity in there so that when the uh, detention area had filled up, it addressed that uh, increase in runoff from that. With this change, we are not changing the um, uh, design of the system. So we, we, <coughs> we have that excess capacity already built into it. Um, it won't be utilized now, so it may, in the, in the interim, help improve this situation because we, it's designed and planned for a certain amount of water to come into it from the paving. Mm -hmm. We're removing a substantial amount of paving, so there will be extra capacity in there. Um, what we also did, um, is we we added a few um, um, in the on the grading area. Uh, we had mentioned this on the previous submittal or previous presentation. How this area here, um, there's an existing catch basin, and this area, which you can kind of see here now, this contour line kind of forms a small bowl, if you would. So what we did is that we added additional spot grades around this 
So if th this is contour elevation uh, 139. So we added spot grades here at 140. So we're basically, again, adding a mound around this thing. It's, it's not a, a sharp mound as you would think a desk. It's, it's more gonna be so they can be maintained. But again, that's in an effort to try and improve the stormwater situation and have it not you know, come off of State Street, go into here and then roll onto the adjacent property. Mark. Uh, Carolyn, there was a, a question in, or comments in the staff about the certified soil analysis. Um, is that, would that be required if the parking is actually being reduced and it's, and the system's already set up to take on more than is, than what's being shown? I, I think that would be appropriate <coughs> just to confirm their assumption. <coughs> so it doesn't really matter the, how, you know, whether they're building a smaller lot, this, they're still planning on, um, more runoff because they are expanding the paved area even for the 12, uh, sorry, I misspoke, the 12 spaces. Um, and it's just a confirmation that it's going to work the way it's designed. So mm -hmm. uh, I haven't heard, because these just came in this week, DPW hasn't looked at these, but I assume their position wouldn't have changed. And I think that was also the agreement that the parties reached with the abutters at 64 Gothic, um, that you received the letter um, last time right, from so the abutter. Yeah. So I we're think still going to do them. Yeah. Okay. You know that would honor that agreement. So DPW will look to determine if the existing stormwater runoff can handle the capacity. Well, they've already looked at the numbers. I think the issue is but the soils in right. the actual location where the detention will be. Um, the DPW thought that was an appropriate um, okay. evaluation to perform. So um, I don't. I think you should keep it in there. Mm -hmm. And they're. Right. Yeah. So I, just two more things. I'm sorry. That's two okay. more okay. things to share. There was a comment about green space at the last time. Um, so we found a record plan. I, I apologize for the brilliant green. It didn't look that way on my computer, but um, this just gives you an indication of the existing parking layout, the building, and then the green space um, that has it has throughout the site. And there's uh, one more which we basically, in case anyone's having trouble. Um, really kind of making out how the um, the site's going to look this is what the proposed plan is you can see the future spaces here uh, the, the outline of the detention basin the riprap um, the future hedge and then this is all the green uh, space that's existing so it's sometimes black and white mm -hmm. makes it difficult uh, to see so uh, Alan. I'm not sure I understand um, the application <coughs> um, Last time you were applying for 18 spaces, nine and nine, and there was concern about it being too much, about whether you could reduce the number of spaces, whether you could move them around, and now you've come back with 21 spaces. Now I understand you're saying you may not build them, but you're asking for a permit to do so. That's and the right. suggestion that you <coughs> notify the planning board, I don't understand that at all. You just send us a letter saying we're going to build them. It's whatever the commission, as, mm -hmm. as Carolyn said, it's whatever the planning board wants to uh, condition that as. But so if you had a permit to just build the 12 spaces, which I guess would be an option, then that's all you'd be permit, permitted to That's build. not what we're applying mm -hmm. for. Though. That's not what you're No. Okay, so you're applying for the, more the, the spaces. The history is, after the hearing last time, there was concern about building them all. We were asked whether they're all required. I've confirmed that. We have 39 parking places on the other side, 39 residents with cars. There's no parking for staff. There's no parking for guests. We have incoming residents. I told you last week, six on the waiting list, five are bringing cars. So we need 18 parking places. This was uh, an attempt to compromise at what the board asked. They asked, can you add more spaces on the side away from the neighbors? We've done that. We've offered to phase it until we need those extra nine spaces. But, but it's the same number of spaces on the neighbor's side. It is. Mm -hmm. We're not reducing it. We need the right. spaces. Right. Um, I'd like to submit, Madam Chair, we have a, a petition from the residents uh, in support of the parking lot expansion. Mm -hmm. These, this was signed by residents of Michael's house. Thank you. Uh -huh. How many parking places can they put in there by right? Uh, they can put as many as they um, want without um, 
up to the point where they um, bump up against their maximum co lot coverage requirement. So they have to keep a minimum of 30% of the entire parcel open. And then otherwise, the rest, 70% uh, could be building or parking lot or structure. Other and if all of the 21 spots were filled, what would those proportions be? What would the open, the resulting yeah. open space? It's, it's 41. The addition of those three spaces only dropped the ratio down by uh, 0.4. So it's still, we have 41% so coverage. We still have 11% um, of wiggle room. So for, from that for both rows. That's, that's yes, the that's, percentage for both. Yes, rows. That's, that's the application that we presented last time plus these additional three. We will. So why are they here then if they can do it by right? They, uh, I, the, the way I should have responded was at, after six, that's what triggers site plan approval, which is why they're here. Oh, it's so site the, plan approval. Right. Right. right, right, I'm sorry. Right. Mark. First, I think the applicant should be commended because they didn't have to do this. Right. You know, you, you heard the abutters and heard the comments from the board, and it wasn't a requirement. They can do it by right, but they've made an attempt, a phased attempt anyway, to, to appease, you know, the concerns that were raised. That being said, jumping to the next phase, so this parking lot's built, everybody's happy, and then in 18 months, demand requires the other nine parking spaces. If the condition was to, to come back, give us a heads up when that's going to happen, and we're back here 18 months from now, but it's, it's another, it would be another site plan approval for which, um, they're already, uh, they can do that by right. So we wouldn't, what would, what would our, not recourse is not the right word, but. Um, why would they come back? <laughs> yeah, why would they come back and what can, we, what could we do about it at that time? Right, I, I, I guess, um, I wouldn't suggest that you um, do require that this phase two come back to you all because, um, First of all, it's three spaces different from what they submitted previously. They're meeting the standards for open space. Um, I guess if you felt that there was something that needed to be addressed on the site plan, you could do that now. And uh, in terms of, let's say, the landscaping is not adequate, it doesn't go the full length of the pro whatever the whatever the issue is, um, that that should be addressed now because the bulk of the project is essentially in front of you. They applied for 18, they bumped it up by three, but they're gonna phase it in based on their demand. I mean, I think you could probably assume that the demand is gonna be there at some point. Even if it's not all nine, they might need four of them in two years or whatever of those additional nine. And then, and, and so I guess um, I, I don't, I think it would be a courtesy for them to say, you know, send the notice saying we're, we're about to, embark on phase two, but um, I certainly don't, I, my recommendation would be that you hold them, hold the line and say we're only going to approve 12 and you may or may not approve the additional nine later. Um, because we wouldn't have any reason, we wouldn't have any basis for not approving it. Right, I mean you just look at, are there some, is there something about, technically about the expansion that doesn't meet the requirements or the code and, you know, and I think they're, addressing a lot of the issues that are under your purview for that technical aspect, the stormwater drainage, the, um, the landscaping, and, and so forth. And I think, um, Mark, you, sa you stated it well that they certainly heard what the residents' right. concerns were in trying to address that. The one I would say that I still would suggest that you might um, think about the lighting a little bit more. We've had right. other national grid lights that have been leased to you know, property owners that have um, the city is required that they come into compliance. So I don't think that's a reason not to have that. That's a really powerful light that they've got right. on there. So. I mean, could you? And I think that would make a. I think that probably has an impact too on the residents. I mean, maybe oh, they don't. Oh, certainly, yeah. You know. Um, one question for you, and then to the applicant. The um, since it's being proposed to be phased construction, if and when needed. Do we have any right to dictate what that, at a minimum, you know, what that phase would be, you know, no sooner than 12 months or, you know, for phase two or anything like that? Do we have any say in that? Um, I guess you'd want to um, want to be clear on why that makes a difference um, and what, you know, what the benefit of that would be. 
Colin. I think it's. I think it's an illusion of a concession. It's not a concession at all. It's they've, they've increased it from 18 to 21. And they're saying it might be phased, well, you know, in the scheme of things, so it'll be delayed a year. And uh, I mean, I don't think it matters. There, it's increased from 18 to 21. The question is whether we should give site plan approval for 21 parking places. It's good that they increased the, um, the visual barrier with, with a dense hedge. Uh, and I think we should look at the issue of lighting, but we should assume they're all going to be built, whether it's, whether it's this fall or next fall. What's the difference? Any other thoughts? Dan? Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. I mean, that's, we are approving 21, but it definitely, I, I agree with Mark that this is a, a very good faith effort to to try something out. It's going to cost more money to have to come back a second time and do it. Um, so the incentive is there to not, you know, if they don't need it, they're not going to do it. And if they need it, they need it. And they have every right to do it. I think it was um, commendable that you guys made the effort to to try to, um, to address the neighborhood concerns. We will. Yes. We'll have public comment in just a minute. So if it were a private lighting fixture, it could be put on a timer, or the strength of it be adopt, be uh, modified, right? That what is private? I mean, they're leasing it from. Oh, but is it on twenty? Uh, is it on all night? Probably. Yeah. We can remove it. it. Doesn't have to be there at all. I mean, it's supposed to be zero at the lot line. I know you're getting spillover from the neighbors on Gothic Street, but is there, could you put like wall packs on the building to illuminate the, at least the parking lot, the parking spaces that are against the building? I think that would then shine right into the neighbors. Right. Not to shine out, to shine just for safety, or if you don't need it, you don't need it, but. Yeah, not wall packs won't do that. We can mm -hmm. talk to National Grid and see if they have a different kind of fixture, or we can just have it turned off. Or put up your own. Or mm -hmm. have it turned off. Well, <laughs> no requirement for light. Right. right. If it's an issue, then we don't have to have it. Doesn't. So I am sensitive. We we've gotten all into our discussion, but I think I will um, take the public comment. Quick one, one comment for you. Yes. Assuming then, as the board, that those additional nine spaces are going to go in, would it be prudent to put that hedge in now to give it a chance to grow? So when those nine spaces come in a year or two years, it's 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 more mature. It's yeah, it's right. ready for it. The only th thing that I would note is that it, then they might get damaged during construction if they do build that out. I mean, um, I, it, I guess it depends on how long they're there and what the separation is. Mull on that while we take public comment. <laughs> okay, now we're ready for public. Please state your name and your address when you come up. on the recorder so it'll get on the record. Cogswell, 95 State Street, a definite abutter uh -huh. of over 40 years. And uh, I wrote a personal note here expressing my feelings simply as I can. Okay. But my can I read this? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Uh, my concern is I've lived in this Thank you. space, my home, for over 40 years. And to me, the Michaels house has a, a limited living arrangement. There's only so many apartments, and there's only so many cars. And initially, I don't think approval would have been given for inadequate parking. Now, why the apartments have grown from, say, 71 to 95, my address, mm -hmm. around 20 units, why you would need more parking space for something that's been adequate for a long time. and. So to have more 
I can see there might be a need for variance in terms of staff or help, a few more spaces. But to have parking that's been there for, I'd say, 40 years, and the units are limited, why you would need more, uh, and especially, uh, I mentioned that aesthetically, the green, that environment, the children, the people going down State Street, to have another parking lot, to me, sounds like another stop and shop or something. This is a magnificent building, and if you don't mind, I brought in uh, what I think this building represents in total. Thank you. It is a yes, we all know the building, yes. Architectural. Yes, I'll hand these around and you can take them back. That's fine, uh, but I have very strong feelings about aesthetic You'll be on the mic so that the, yeah, <laughs> so the record will hear you. This will, some people actually watch this the next day. <laughs> okay, well, I have very strong feelings about what I call a neighborhood. And uh, it's not just a new residential. It's, that building has been there forever and it's classically architectural and to need more parking spaces, that's my question. Why the bigger number of yep. spaces? There are only so many apartments. Why more parking outside of staff? I don't, I don't get that. Thank you for, for your, your remarks. Yeah, okay. I, and I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. It's just uh, a beautiful place on State Street. It's not King Street. Yep. You know, so when people, there's children and people, and so when you put a lot of tar up there, it's hot. It's not very complimentary yep. to the building or the neighborhood, whatever that is. Thank you. So, appreciate it. And you, sir, you had your hand up earlier. Would you like to speak? Oh, Don. You're not done yet, are you? No, you have to start. Somebody, Bruce. Bruce. Uh -huh. And over the years, oh my. I've added a few dormers on, but I've always it's like been you've done a lot of work, actually. But been respectful to the area, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry, you have to go oh, back I'm to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate it. To me, the green might seem silly, but it seems very environmentally important that people walking down the street or the children crossing the street. Uh, it's, it's a special, st State Street is a special street. Yep. It's not Broadway and it's not King Street. And I think it should, that building should be respected and not because I'm against parking per se, but it takes away the character of the building to have another parking lot which comes with car doors, bell, you know, keys, exhaust, blah, blah, blah. So to have tar instead of green grass to me is not appropriate for where we need environmentally to see more green space here and there.
Pulaski Park, you know. So I don't see why they need more parking. That's my question. Thank you. From 21 to why more parking when it's already a set community? I don't, I don't get that. Okay. Yes, sir. Hi. My name is Bruce Sloman. Uh, my wife and I butt at 28 Trumbull Road. I spoke last time. Um, thank you, Carolyn. I've had several emails going back and forth with sort of neophyte questions on this. Um, and basically, what we've been told, and you know, uh, uh, had advice, but but have not um, actually signed legal counsel. And basically, what we've been told is is yes, they have the right to do this, and the only way, which would be a slim chance of stopping, will be after the fact in either a, a superior court or land court. So those would be the other, other options. Um, very slim chance. So. Assuming that this is going to go ahead, and, and in fact, it's nice that they're going to at least start with the 12. Uh, the issues of concern, there's still some issues of concern. First of all, they do own several other properties in the area and manage. Um, want to make sure that they really need them here. I think it should be put in the um, approval document that these spots in all parking spots on this lot be used only for residents and visitors residents, visitors, um, and employees of this location. Is, is that a fair thing that we can do? We'll discuss it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the second, one of the big issues that, that hasn't, it really worries me that it hasn't been addressed is drainage. Um, the, the, he's talked about it, should be able to take it, but if, if you could have seen the rain the other day, I, I know it's been a dry summer, the rain pooling on the side where they're, they're going to be building depression dr uh, ditch is... Uh, want to make sure that that works and the depression pool you know worry about if it doesn't work uh, mosquitoes is our plan for um, are we going to have a it's a I don't know it goes along the length of my house I don't know how to change the site on this um, the drainage depression is right here on the screen and if that doesn't drain it you know that could be an issue um, the other big issue, which hasn't been addressed, is, is, is snow removal. Currently, they don't remove it. They plow it from back there. And it's usually plowed, if you look on the screen, it's plowed into this area by the, the um, between the dumpster and sort of where the, the drainage depression is. And right now, that would create a severe problem in a, in a big storm. You can see it. Sometimes, they normally, they plow it. I think they bring in a, a payloader, and it's, it's topped up. Because two winters ago, it was way above my head, a whole big, long thing, and it, it takes a long time to melt. But th the issues that could cause, I, I, I think there needs to be a plan in there for removal when it gets above or, of a certain level. That's something that you all have experience with, I know. Uh, I did not bring a snow removal expert with me. But there seems to be no other place to put it. Now you're going to be adding initially, I don't know, around 1,500 square feet or more, then another 1,500 square feet. Um, that's 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 a problem because all that uh, all the all the snow has to go somewhere and when it melts all the water has to go somewhere is are the drains sufficient to take that and we'll find out we have problems if, if there's a big winter after they build the first 12 so D did you think that that was accounted for is it fair to me to ask him that I mean I, I you've addressed it you're an engineer you have to talk to, you. Have to, talk yeah. to you all okay um, you can Phrase the question, though. Go ahead. I want to make sure it's been accounted for. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to deal with these things up front than it is later. Yep. You know, after everybody's harmed. And my property's pretty good. I do get it, it, the way it was built. I was I was told I was there used to be a canal there. My house is from the 1800s with rubble and brick going up. But a couple of times a year, I get water through the walls, which seems weird to me because it's. It, it almost in some places slopes a little bit up to my house, so it, it, you'd look at it and go, how can, you know, where's it coming from? What's well, coming from underground, so. Um, and Don has issues with his. Has, has, 
I'm sure, just, just a quick question. I'm sorry it's been measured and done right, but has, has the square footage been checked against what's there now and not what was there 10 or 15 or 20 years ago? You mean for the green space requirement? For the green space requirement, correct. Because there was some paving done. I think that's the, it, this looks correct. There's paving done. You know, there's a little building here. It, it, seem, it seems all right. I just wonder it, 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 if I went around and looked and you look at the other side of the building um, and you measured the square footage of the building, if you told me that they, are, they have 40% open space, I would, have, I would have said, geez, I'm not sure if that's correct. So Carolyn just whispered to me that there has to be a building engineer that stamps those plans. Okay. So They're stamped by the, the HB is an engineering firm. They stamp the plans. Okay. So I, I think we can take I just, I, confidence just in that. Question. Again, I'm a ne neophyte at this. Yep. Um, and there's not going to be a fence going up. There's no fence in here. Um, so I, all the residents really don't like a fence because people for 20 years have been walking across their property to go elsewhere. So they. No, I think the hedge was in was solving that problem. Then. I, I I really wish there were some way, some other way. I mean, as I mentioned, um, it's a shame. I, as I was looking at um, State Street today, it, you look, the parking spots almost half of them were empty. I mean, to use for staff, they could easily. Uh, again, I don't know how this works, but at least 10 of these from the city on a uh, permit basis, parking only, take down the parking meters. That solves 10 spots right there. And maybe not have to put those in and save them money on the construction as well. Um, seems to me like a very good option. Thank you. I'd Thank you. Uh -huh. So you can trust that everyone on this committee has walked that parking lot. Okay. So I thought the pictures might inspire the okay. in importance of keeping the greenery. And so my question is, if you really, not you, I, I, if you really need more parking, I don't get it because well, we we heard that and we we think we should hear from the other people who came tonight too but I'll pass these around while we're doing that all right thank you I appreciate it thank you um, next comment yes Hi, my name is Susan Grant my husband and I live at number 24 Trumbull Road here is a photograph of the property as it appears at present. The house that we live in and which we also have tenants is this a reddish one there. The house that Bruce Sloman and Priscilla Lane own and live in is this one here. Right. These houses were all built many, many years before there was a planning board or a zoning board for that matter. And the back wall of our house abuts in the most literal sense the property on which these people are planning to pave and put cars. And here is a picture of what our backyards will all look like once that is accomplished. It will degrade the environment of our houses tremendously, not just in terms of the macadam, although I agree with what she said, it will raise the uh, temperature of the area, but it will also raise the noise level, not to mention the exhaust fumes, and not to mention people coming and going at all hours of the day and night. They may say what they like, but once these parking lots are there, there is really no reliable way that they will be regulated. We all know that that's not going to be the case. My wish is that you would disapprove this project, whether they are theoretically entitled to it or not. I think it represents a tremendous degradation of the entire neighborhood, which at present has a sort of green oasis. And I want to add, though this may be irrelevant, that from what I have read, Housing projects and development projects that are presently being approved in other cities, even as far away as Amherst, are not trying to provide a parking space for every human being who lives in the building. They're providing far fewer parking spaces with the hope being, I guess, 
that people will walk, bicycle, take public transportation, or use their wheelchairs to get somewhere, instead of having to have an automobile for every single resident. So there is, in my view, no justification for this project, whether it be 9, 12, or 21 parking spaces. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else want to speak? Yes. Good evening. My name is Christina Schoen. I'm the site manager of Michael's House, and I have been there for almost five years. I'm just here tonight to say that there is a need. There is a very critical need. We have 80 units, 80 units that have been in place for 30 years as of October 6th this year. We have not added any units. We are seeing a trend, and we have been seeing a trend where the residents that are moving in, the residents that are on my wait list, are more ambulatory than what they were in the past. They're coming in with vehicles, they're coming in with, as their main source of transportation, as well as bicycles with their main source of transportation. My parking lot right now, we are currently at full capacity as far as residents with vehicles and, re and um, resident parking stalls. If we do not get this parking lot, the seniors of this building, and I have 80 seniors that live in this building, who will be forced to find parking on State Street. And as of right now, I have residents who are afraid to go out at night, afraid to go out in the late afternoon for fear if they come home at even seven o'clock at night, they will not have a parking spot available to them. And they will be forced to drive around State Street and find parking and then have to walk home. There is a very, very critical need for this. We obviously would not have spent all this time, all this money, um, if we did not have the need for it. So I just wanted to, um, the petition, 64% of, of my building did sign that petition in support. It is unfortunate that we will be losing some green space, but in the end, we'll definitely be gaining some senior safety. So that's all I wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you. In an effort to lighten this a little bit, isn't it great that we live in a town where your worry about going out at night is your parking place? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. My name, <clears throat> my name is Don Grant, and I'm the husband of Susan Grant. Uh, here's a picture of uh, the retention area that's going to be built, maybe, uh, after yesterday. I guess they, uh, the, way I, the way I hear it is uh, they can build uh, as many spaces as uh, they want as long as they are permitted to. And uh, I was uh, encouraged when I heard yesterday that the uh, nine spaces uh, that are closest to the, uh, to the uh, private buildings uh, on the north side, uh, uh, yeah, that these nine spaces were not going to be built, and that three more spaces were added to this side. I thought it was going to be a uh, uh, quid pro quo, but uh, it sounds as if it's just an additional three spaces. Uh, I suggest that the planning board uh, approve these 12 spaces and not approve the nine and let uh, let them come back later, uh, whether it be next week or two years from now, for uh, and, and ask permission for the, uh, the other nine. Uh, and I'd like to uh, say that I, uh, with uh, Connie Cogswell's uh, impression of uh, the, the school building. It's a beautiful building, uh, and it's uh, enhanced 
by having at least one side of the building have a large open area. Uh, this side, uh, our side of the building, uh, is, a, is a lovely place. And the whole aspect is nice from our buildings and from the sidewalk on State Street and also from the apartments on the north side of uh, Michael's house. So I hope you'll uh, decide to uh, go with the, uh, the with the twelve spaces on the uh, on to the right of the entrance, and uh, forego the uh, approval of the nine other spaces. Has that existing light been a problem to you? No. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Welcome up. My name is Barbara Brooks, and I've been a resident of Michael's house for a little over two years now. And I have seen the problems with the parking in the original area. We used to have two or three visitors parking, but with uh, new people coming in with their cars, that has been taken away. You do not have room for guests to come and visit with you. It's very hard for them, especially at night, to take and find parking on State Street. You can go down there almost any night of the week and you can see they're all taken. And they're all taken by people who maybe have a second car or um, need a separate parking area because they've got the monthly permits. Um, so I think, I even though the fact that I hate the idea that they have to take our green spot because it is very pretty out there, this is really needed for us. I mean, it's unfair to say, well, they don't need any more parking because everyone has a right to have a parking space near where they live. At least that's my idea. I think I'm pretty accurate with that. Um, so I'm hoping that you will go ahead and approve all of the parking spaces. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? was here last week. Yes, can I get your name again, please? And I'm Dorothy Meehan, mm -hmm. and I live at 32 Trumbull Road. Thank you. And I am hoping that there's going to be some way to control the people that walk across your property. And also, I am hoping that we're not going to have snow banks that are way up like they have been in the past. And I also hope that you people have heard of the saying, you are whipping a dead horse. I hope that's not what we're doing. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, we've had kind of three rounds oh, now. I'm getting a sense of why this might be necessary and I would say it's the numbers that matter whether it's nine or four uh, obviously there's a need for change that I didn't think about initially when you rant and you have a part but as this woman just said uh, guests and things like that parking is highly <coughs> Yes, I think when the meeting was opened two weeks ago, the explanation for the need was because actually senior citizens are in better health and still driving much longer than they used to be. It, and so this is my equation. For the number of units in the building, uh, those should be accommodated. But the units for guests and all of that, I don't know how you, far you can go with that. Yep. So, so I'm going by numbers, one on one, the apartments. Yeah. That's, I, I don't think I they're think. actually even asking for anywhere near one on one. Uh, okay. That would be 80 parking places, so it's way under uh, that. Uh, okay. Well, all right. 
Thank you. I want to make sure you get all your pictures back. Um, is there an opinion as to whether we should close public meeting at this point? And keep it open for a little bit. Okay. Um, further discussion on our part? Um, I'll start. Um, I was encouraged that you were phasing it. I'm, I, I think I'd rather approach this not as a, oh my gosh, what could you do with the second row, but the fact that you are willing to phase it, I think is the softest entry of new parking onto the property that we could ask for. Uh, I am interested in whether you would go ahead and put in that hedge, because there is comings and goings. Um, so that that's uh, a little hard to impose since it's not the headlight side of the property, but it's, it's something that I'm mulling over personally. Um, we typically, when we have the opportunity, demand zero lot line because it is part of the zoning. And so we're all sort of scratching our head over what do we do about the major lights that we could probably fix at this point. So that's something I, I think we ought to discuss. Um, I, I think we will ask for the certified soil analysis, and I think his picture is the perfect reason that, that we say we need to do that. Um, I'd like again for Carolyn, for you to go through what, what we have before us. I mean, often, often the public thinks we have a lot more capability than we really do, and so I want to make sure that we understand what, what, is, what our possibilities are here. Um, so you can do that now, and then we'll get okay. on conversation. <laughs> So um, as you guys have been talking about, this is site plan approval. It's, n it's, it's about how the site functions. It's not whether or not the use is allowed. The use is already there. There's residential. Um, the trigger for site plan is because it's the addition of six parking spaces. So you want to look at the egress, the landscaping, the lighting, um, the layout, stormwater. Um, so you want to make sure those meet all the standards and that um, issues are addressed. Um, the basic zoning um, criteria have to be shown to be met before they even get to site plan. So the minimum open space requirements um, and the minimum setbacks from the sidewalk for the start of parking spaces and that kind of thing. So all of those have been met. Um, those are hard and fast rules. Um, so. You know, you want to look at the drainage. You heard from DPW and from the abutters on Gothic Street that a lot of the runoff now that's causing water damage, you know, off-site, on-site, there and beyond is coming from State Street. They, they're, they're two things that they're proposing to address that. One of them is the, the dam or the speed hump um, at the driveway, which, um, Frankly, from a um, from pedestrians walking on the sidewalk, I think that also increases the safety because cars necessarily have to slow when they come up and um, enter State Street, or they're coming the other way. Um, so, but anyway, that the, that six inches of height will help um, with keeping that water on State Street instead of letting it flow on site. So, in fact, you might not have the ponding where they're proposing to put that pond anyway to begin with, and then that additional rain gardener um, um, detention area will um, control for the runoff. So a snow storage is also in your purview. There's a lot of green space still here. Um, you typically, you know, in, in tighter situations, you might have a condition that requires um, removal of snow. But I think everyone, you know, particularly two winters ago, everyone was having to truck snow off and find a legal place to locate that. And um, that's just what happens. It's worst scenario, you know, three blocks into town. Um, so that, and then of course the landscaping, um, the use that are proposed along that boundary, um, you know, that's, we'll leave that up to you in terms of how you want to condition that, but we, typically it's a three-foot height on planting, and that's what they're proposing. Um, and then the other thing I would just suggest, there was a comment about um, using parking spaces on State Street. They're public metered spaces. The whole idea for those is for the public. So if you have long-term occupants, I think 
you know, you guys understand that in terms of looking at the bigger system of parking, that we don't want residential parking to absorb those metered spots where we want to see turnover because there's schools across the way, there's, you know, State Street and Sirius Market and so forth. So, um, and, and then finally, I guess, I, um, just the comment about um, restricting the use of the parking lot. Um, that's not really enforceable right. by the city and you know people from the campus school might sneak in there to pick up their kids and park um, you know and that's just a, a private policing issue yeah, really. I think that's the owner of the building yeah problem, any other questions for Carolyn I have a question oh I'm sorry um, whenever we can we try to sneak in trees when allowed uh, is this one of those instances where, like, along State Street, we could sneak a tree in just because of the nature of the work? I don't, I, I don't know how many trees exist along that tree belt or Well, there's sidewalk. a lot of trees in that next section between the two driveways. Right. That back there mature. Ideally, you would like the tree up near the front of the property, which is where you're constrained for angling. Parking itself takes that there. Yeah. And in the back of the property, you've got the problem of the trees affecting the drainage right. plan. I'm just throwing it out there just because we, at, at every opportunity, we try to do that. <coughs> so the if I could, I could address that mm -hmm. if it's appropriate. Um, so this is the existing survey that was part of it. I've zoomed it up. Um, so as you go down State Street, you can see the corner, there's a small tree right here. This, you know, was a larger one. Then we get into along the sides, we have a 40 inch, another three inch, this is a 30 inch tree. So there's a couple in here that we were preserving as part of, even if the nine spaces go in, those would not be taken down. And then there is the the trees in the back, which are pines, and there's a, a couple of deciduous there. But along State Street, there's it, just the one in the corner? As you go along State Street, there there's more. There's a 12 inch oak, there's a 24 inch oak. And I mean, we, we didn't survey the entire property, but there's an 18 inch, so there's some fairly substantial trees oh, that, yeah. in, in the front of the property already. <coughs> Mark, I don't know if that corner. helps. That's the Googler. Yeah. So it's yeah. a well canopied I knew it section. was in, like, right in front, but I yeah. envisioned a green space where the driveway's coming in. Right. And I don't know if that gives us an opportunity to put one or. What about to the left of the entry? To the left of the entry? Right. I mean, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to put trees at the curb cut because of sight lines. Right. <clears throat> um, I think what would, um, depending <coughs> on, you, you could look certainly where the n additional um, nine spaces are going to go and if there's room at the corner. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like there's a tree shown up there, but I don't see it on Street View here, unless it's the bigger one that's set back a little bit. But the um, maybe towards the northwest corner, after the nine spaces, there might be room, but you might want to look at the. I don't know if you could pull up that plan just to show where your parking spaces are going to be. If this was Taco Bell on King Street, we would require a, street you know, trees. trees and. I know this is heavily wooded and it's the green space that we're losing, which, you know, even the applicant doesn't want to lose, but it's a necessity. But if we can offset that in any way, whether it's the hedge on the north side or one additional tree, then I think we should. So there might be an opportunity sort of at the front end of where the views are proposed. Yep. Um, it's, it's tough to see, but the trees are here. They're just a very, you can see them here really well. Right, light, I think I would. Like, right, there's one here. The yeah, the left end and yeah, the, there's the, one right here. Oh, there's one right there? Yeah. Mark, how would you feel about tying that to the installation of the extra parking places to sort of add some incentive not to do that? Mm. Well, is there room to put in a tree there? That's what I was asking right. a minute ago. It looks like it's a parking place wide. Where well, there's the also a pole and a guy wire there in that area. Yeah, there's a utility pole here. Yeah. Um, we have lines coming in. This is all overhead lines. Uh, this is the overhead line going to this light pole in the back, which you can see right here. So these all kind of converge uh, on themselves. Um, underground, you can see our gas line coming in through here. And then this is a drain line, but it's going the other way. So we don't have to talk about a deciduous tree. It could be shrubbery planted. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, and I would also recommend that you have a condition about the tree protection. They've shown that they would do that, but I think that would be key is to ensure that the health, to maintain the health of those trees, you know, during construction, to make sure that they are healthy after construction, I guess is what I should say. Well, it will come as no surprise that I'm very sympathetic to the neighbors. I, 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 I think they're your neighbors. Huh? They are my neighbors, yes. I, I, I understand I don't think that there's a legal justification to deny, but, I, but I, I don't think it's, I think that there are alternatives and I think, I don't think it's a necessity to continue paving over. I think that there's a real glut of paved parking spaces downtown and we can figure out some ways to better utilize them. Uh, I, uh, but I really, I'm not excited, I'm not happy to approve this, I, I'm extremely disappointed more than I was last week. But again, we're here, we have the regulations in front of us and we have to mitigate as best we can. Other thoughts? Well, I feel pretty much the same way and we've got all these places further in town where there's absolutely no parking associated with them. So it's weird for second car parking to suddenly become something that we're talking about. It's interesting that this is the first URB parcel outside of Central Business District. Yeah. I mean, it makes me wonder. C, just saying. This is C? Yeah. On the right. Really? It's it's so close it well, just right. it feels you wrong. Should, you know, given its use and its activity yeah. level, should yeah. it even be C or should it be in central business mm -hmm. or and we're going to be talking about parking I think at some yeah, point they're talking about maximum parking and you know I mean it's just difficult to undo pavement we're raising money for Cracker Barrel Alley and two blocks yeah. away it's just weird mm -hmm. you know I would say though that they so there aren't they're not um, they're not even come up to one parking space per unit and they also have staff so it's and and even if it were in a different district, it wouldn't yeah. change the parking calculus. So, right. um, I just think it's lazy. I just think that there's a lot of underutilized parking, and we have mechanisms to better manage underutilized parking downtown. And we just have to try harder to use them. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I just want to go on the record, just countering that. I think it's exactly the opposite, and we have such a uh, parking shortage, and and I experience it all the time. And, and I think this is a, it's a reasonable proposal, and I think they've done a really, you know, nice job of trying to accommodate and phase it in. Um, I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I saying can't. that I think I, I appreciate that they've tried to make uh, accommodation for the neighbors by by phasing it, and that there is a that there is a parking shortage, and I disagree, <laughs> and run into this all the time. But anyway. Uh, very much in favor of just getting this through. Okay. I just, um, and I certainly appreciate Tessa's comments, but I guess uh, perhaps because of uh, where I work, I will mention that I do think, you know, uh, that you have to consider the, the profile of the residents of the building uh, and asking elders, even if they're capable of driving and having a car, to find alternatives and, and farther away is, you know, is not taking into account who's actually living there. It, it's not a public, I mean, it'd be different if it was a, just an apartment building and anybody could live there, but it, you know, it is for elders. Uh, and I think you have to take into account, even if they're capable of driving still, and I have no doubt that it does restrict their activities because uh, they're not, you know, they don't want to go out at night, they don't want to go out at dark, you know, they want to have to walk two blocks or one block. You know, they want to be able to park. And it is still way under even one space per unit. Mark. I think in general, uh, we're, we're having a, a, a special permit discussion, right. and this is a site plan mm -hmm. review, and I think the public needs to understand that in a site plan review, right. it's, a, it's a math equation. Right. And if, if, the, if they meet the setbacks and everything, there is nothing we can do. It's, right. they, they can do it by right. The only things that we have control of are landscaping, the hedge, the light, right. I would recommend remove it. Um, or drainage, which the applicant has uh, agreed to address. And that's all that we can, that's all that we are allowed to do. We can't do anything, what, wh however we feel about green space or parking spaces, that's what we're limited to do. And so, um, while I appreciate the discussion, I don't think it's relevant. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, 
I also think we have to, I mean, I agree with what Mark said. I also agree with what John said. We have to remember these are seniors, and we heard from the manager of the project who said there that uh, the people living there are being inconvenienced and restricted for lack of parking. Uh, I think we should absolutely approve it. Well, and I, I think the burden of whether they need it or not is they're willing to spend the money to get it. So, I mean, that's, I mean, that's almost like proof in the pudding to me. And of course, while we're still open, um, and can we? Mr. Crystal has been wanting to speak, and okay. I haven't. Can haven't we condition read. on the uh, snow removal in that on that part on that side of the building versus snow storage? Well, um, because if there's a drainage issue now, and they they push everything, you know, to the east side or to the end of the parking lot where the drainage is a is a problem, you could see if we have a tough winter, and you've got a big mound of snow there that Gothic Street will suffer because of it or, or some scenario like that. Mr. Crystal. If I could address a couple of things. Yeah. One, there isn't uh, can I get you on the mic so it's on the record? There's not a drainage issue. Ed Etheridge spoke last time. He owns a property on Gothic Street. Since the city improved State Street, there's been one incidence where water's flown up, flowed back mm -hmm. through the pro from the public way onto our property to Gothic Street. So we came last week, we tried to address all of the concerns that were raised by the board and the neighbors. We're willing to put a hedge in if we put additional parking in. We're willing to phase it, that seems reasonable. Uh, I just wanna point out that if, if we don't provide more parking, it's not the senior, the seniors may get stuck out there. We're gonna have staff that won't park on State Street because it's metered. They'll park all day long on Trumbull and all the side streets. And while I understand having been on the planning board for 12 years, you have to be sensitive to neighbors' concerns. We've heard from half a dozen neighbors. Have you read the latest parking study the city had done? Yep. All of the edge neighborhoods are problems. If you start forcing people off private property onto the side streets, it just exacerbates the problem. We've been talking for 10 years about more parking downtown. I agree with Mr. Felton, there's absolutely a problem and forcing people, whether it's seniors or staff, for eight hours during the day, off of parking that meets all of the zoning requirements onto the streets that are already overtaxed just doesn't make, in my opinion, good overall planning sense. Thank you. How many businesses provide parking places for their staff? Most. I think we should yes. close here. Yeah, um, can I get a motion for that, please? So moved. Allen's move that we close the public comment and a second it all in favor. Thank you. Um, um, <laughs> um, thank you. Um, it, it's our way to try to have the discussion among ourselves. It's not meant to be rude. It's just that we have steps we try to go through. Um, are there any other thoughts on this that um, I'd, I'd like to, I've been taking some notes and I think we'll get these out. Um, the DPW will look that they've, they've seen the, the plan that, that currently exists for the stormwater. So it's, uh, that's been taken care of. Um, lights at the lot line, I think that taking out that big light yeah. would be an asset. you save you some money on renting that one. And I think that's um, something I feel like we've gone a step in the right direction in that step. Um, certified soil analysis, I think will, um, it almost sounds like good engineering step to go through. Um, parking for on-site use was brought up. I don't know that, you, that, that, no. that there's no way for us to control that. Um, I think we should have tree protection in the, mm -hmm. in the. Um, Prior to issuance of a building permit that should be installed, yeah. I would yep. suggest. Um, I think that we've come out ahead. So between the meeting that we had two weeks ago and where we are now, I think we, you know, to have the parking where the lights go against the building, I thank you for that. Um, I think the hedge is a good idea. Um, I think the, the water table preventer bridge ramp, whatever we're calling that is a good idea. Um, so I'm, I'm taking last comments. The only, the only two comments I had, in addition to the conditions you mentioned, one was snow removal and the other was the hedge as to when, you know, when should, yeah, should that be installed now or in the future? Yep. Uh, thoughts on snow removal? 
Uh, my, I've closed co public comment. Um, my thoughts on that is particularly for the management of this building, I think they'll stay on top of the snow removal. That's just my reaction. Mm -hmm. um, they've, they've been managing the parking lot they have. Um, and I think we would have heard from Mr. Etheridge if, it, if they weren't managing that side of the building. So mm -hmm. I'm not really, mm -hmm. I, I personally am not interested in that. I'll take a separate vote on it if you want. It's not even clear to me that it would be have a positive impact on the drainage. I mean, there's a certain amount of snow that's going to be on the property. It actually probably melts more slowly in the spring if it's piled high because it's solid ice in the middle. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. That's fine. Um, so then I, um, I don't know that we, we, we have the purview, I think, to request the hedge to go in now, but I, or, or later, but I, I'd actually love to see the hedge go in and get established. Um, if the trend that they are seeing with their residents goes in the, in the way they think, they're gonna build the extra parking places. And so I think preparing for that is a good thing. I'm, I really appreciate the idea that you're not doing them right now. I guess there'd need to be some kind of contingency that if they're damaged during the construction, because I just can't imagine that they wouldn't be. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know how I don't know how close they they are, and I, I don't know. I guess I I think the purpose is to deflect the headlights, not to create a visual barrier. Mm -hmm. And if there aren't headlights, I don't see that they're really going to be doing. Yeah, it is. In some sense, it's hiding the green that that remains. That's right. right. Okay, is that a, an agreeable yeah, story? Okay, so the hedge will be um, when hedge they do the yep. hedge as sown when the others go in. Mm -hmm. After that discussion, can I get a motion? I move that we approval of, <laughs> this is gonna be a hard, of uh, petition for eight, uh, 21 additional parking spaces at Michael's house with the conditions as noted. Uh, lights at the lot line, uh, certified soil analysis, uh, parking for on-site use only, which we no, know is... No, 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 that's oh, good. Oh, sorry. That sorry about that one. Um, and tree protection uh, during construction. Second. And the hedge uh, installed as yep. shown. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Seconded by Ann. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, we have some more things on the agenda. Um, minutes and I don't know if you want to do uh, the CPC thing here. No. Okay. Um, you, sir. Did yes. you read the minutes? I did read the minutes. Would you make a motion to approve them? Motion to approve them. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Second. By Ann. All in favor. Yeah, they were a nice job to have captured all that, Carolyn. Um, a parking standards discussion, if time, I'm, I just don't think I've got the stomach for it. Uh, well, we, um, I don't think we have any permits for the next meeting, so I think that would be a good conversation meeting for mm -hmm. yep. everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd like to actually go back and look at the parking study that he mentioned that I know it, we had done. It, yeah, it's interesting. Uh -huh. And I actually have one from UMass on car ownership called Peak Car. So, I mean, I think there are a lot of things moving around about this right now. Um, I personally am sad to announce that I lost another engineer to Uber. So, I mean, you know, that wow. technology could actually have an influence on this too. Um, do we need to do anything else, Carolyn? Um, no. What's the CPC? Yeah, what's the CPC appointment? Oh. Um, that's on because I'm currently the CPC person and my appointment to that has expired. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go ahead and have that discussion. It won't take long. Um, I have been on a lot of committees in town, transportation and parking, um, and, and CPC is one of the nicer ones, frankly, because it you give away money. It, it has some <laughs> frustration to it because you never have enough. Mm. But 
it also doesn't meet in the summer and it um, you get I think the fun of going on site visits so most of the things that come in historic buildings or conservation there are arranged site visits for us to go see them so there are about six slots meeting slots that happen in the fall and six or eight that happen in the spring so I was um, proposing to to the planning office that I have had the fun of that for a couple of rounds now and if somebody wants to swap an assignment with me for whatever committee they're on that I'd give you the pitch that that's a fun committee and I'd be willing to to swap with somebody well you're the transportation person I'll swap with you okay <laughs> <laughs> I um, that's one of the least favorite in the history. <laughs> but um but yes I, you've done that and and that was a uh, that was a request that I appreciated when I asked you to swap with me before because we were facing a, a change of chair on mm -hmm. the CPC mm -hmm. and that has settled down now and so I won't feel so uh, much yeah, I want you to go into the transportation thing and kick butt okay. <laughs> and I can't. Um, so do I need to do anything other than that discussion because it's a mayoral change it's not or is it this well, committee Right, you would no. vote to recommend and the mayor okay. and sends it forward. John? I move that we recommend uh, you and Ann switching. <laughs> Second. Second by Tess. All in favor? Okay. I move to buy Carla a drink. <laughs> second, second. As we adjourn, all in favor? Before we adjourn. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dan. Um, so there was some email exchange which got um, appropriately squashed about infill review and I think I would like to at least bring bring that up as a possible either study or I don't I really don't know what the mechanism is to go and and we look at sort of what have been the impacts uh, of infill um, positive and negative and at least you know I think that there's a fair amount of discussion happening about it in town yeah. um, and it would be appropriate for us to take that on as a sort of due diligence before getting f too much further down the road so Carolyn yeah. when if we do that and we have a, dis a discussion of transportation can we have some maps in front of us that show these spaces again sure. not that we haven't seen them but yeah. it's really useful to have the maps and look at these things and now that we've had some of this stuff envision how some areas are versus others with that in front of us again yeah so what I was thinking was you know we can have this discussion at the next meeting and sort of talk about what makes sense we could certainly um, you know one of the things I think would be beneficial is we could assign some um, interns in our office um, and we have several this fall we can have them pull go through the building permits and sort of the A and R's that you've yeah. and sort right. of then go and take pictures look at that and say this is for the zoning this is not this is because some projects also went forward before the zoning changes and people hated those but they thought it was part of the zoning it really didn't have anything to do with them and so we could you, you know sort of start the conversation around that yeah I so, think yeah. it'd be good if we if 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 it's not too burdensome if we said since these plans went into effect we've had you know making this up 10 infill projects mm -hmm. here they are because for the most part it seems like the conversation has been this is exactly what this plan was intended to do more infill close to downtown nice job approve and we've had very few discussions like Hinkley Street like whoa is this yeah. what we really intended that type of thing so it'd be nice to know you know nine out of ten were spot on one not so much or whatever the yeah. relations are yeah. So we can talk about it a little bit more the next meeting, but then I would suggest too it might take us a little bit more yeah. time to sort of right. gather yes. all yes. that. And okay. the same thing with the parking, you know, having the where the parking, the the long term, short term, three hour, two hour, one hour, whatever parking, you know, there's maps in here, but you have to go back and forth between the map and the and and the uh, tables in order to know which one is which in the abstract way in which they're shown I just think all of those questions particularly considering that we that we have put housing in that doesn't have any parking at all I mean which is which is really different and I know we had no control over this I mean we had to do what we had to do but it has left me wondering about 
uh, about that and this study have left me wondering about the parking too. A quarter won't do it for you, will it? <laughs> <laughs> Can I hear a move to adjourn? Thank you, Dan. Yep. Motion to adjourn. By Alan, seconded by Mark. All in favor? Yo.